my name is Melissa Broom. I'm the director, director of marketing for PassiveInvesting.com. Wanted to show you, um, well, first of all, I'm going to be discussing um, creating authority platforms to accelerate your success in apartment syndication today. Um, so something I'm super familiar with is sort of all, but basically my, my job here at PassiveInvesting.com is to manage manage these things. So we'll get a little more into that in just a, just a bit, but um, real quick, wanted to show you our website. So PassiveInvesting.com, um, we are a syndication group where um, we have multiple different asset classes, multifamily being the largest. So this is multifamily investor nation, um, but we also have additional asset classes. Um, if you scroll down on our website, you'll see we, we have self-storage, car wash, hotel, and we also have a real estate debt fund. Um, so if you want to learn more about our team, you can click on the meet the team tab. Um, and if you're interested in learning more about our investments, you can click under our current offerings here, or you can go ahead and um, fill out the join the investor club form, and then you'll be connected with someone from our investor relations team. If you're interested in learning more about us. Um, another thing I wanted to mention before I get started, um, our managing partners, Dan Hanford and Danny Randazzo wrote a book recently we just released. Um, so I actually have a copy right here. Um, so, um, th the link to purchase is in the chat box, but this is a great resource for active or passive investors. It's the ultimate guide for, um, apartment syndication. Um, it's a great book. Um, very, very, um, lots of details. If you're in this business and you want to learn more, um, click that link, go get your book, leave a review. We always appreciate reviews. Um, and yeah, so we'll get started over here with, with the webinar. So um, happy Halloween for those of you who celebrate Halloween. I decided to wear my skeleton earrings today for Halloween. So um, being a little bit festive, but um, really excited to be here today and to discuss authority platforms. Like I said, this is something that I do on a um, deal with on a daily basis. Um, we, our, our marketing team works really hard to keep all of these things going for PassiveInvesting.com and Multifamily Investor Nation, our two brands. Um, so just to get started, so what is an authority platform? So an authority platform is, a, is basically your, um, is creating a digital or online platform that has established itself as a trusted and respected source of information. So the key here is a trusted and respected source for information. So um, making sure that you are, you know, giving out quality resources and education and um, knowledge. That's that's key here. Um, it's really creating your making yourself a leader in apartment syndication. So in this space, being a leader, um, and also so what kind of um, forms is like what different authority platforms that there are. Um, blogs, websites, social media, podcasting. Pod podcasting is a big one. We'll get into that. YouTube channels, um, online forums and communities and blogs. So really, so that's really an authority platform is just being present in the space, educating, being the source of knowledge for people, you know, uh, writing a book, starting a webinar series, starting a podcast series. So all of those things kind of lead into like what is a what is an authority platform. Um, so uh, why should I establish an authority platform as an apartment syndicator? So um, the the goal syndicators, if you're in this business, you part of this business is raising money, raising capital from investors, right? So um, you want to, I know if you've heard Dan Hanford speak before, one of our managing partners, you've heard him talk about the investor triad and the no and the like and the trust. So all of these things are so important when you want to become successful in apartment syndication. Um, just a couple of things to, to keep in mind for your authority platform as you get started in this. And we'll talk about how to get started. Um, but you want to make, make sure that you're putting out high quality content, um, informative, valuable content that resonates with your audience. So, um, making sure that, you know, you're not wasting somebody's time. If they do join your webinar, you're not wasting your time or listening to your podcast. So that's really important is that there's some planning involved and you're, you know, I like, for example, this webinar, I have notes, like I took some time and I spent, um, putting notes together, um, trying to make sure that when I'm not wasting your time because you chose to join me today for this webinar or watch this recording on YouTube. 
Um, so another, another aspect of authority platforms is engagement. So you want to make sure that you're constantly um, talking to your audience and, and engaging with them on social media or other forms of communication, um, building a community really around that, around your, your um, authority platform. So a lot of people have asked us before um, how we manage like LinkedIn and Facebook. Do we use a VA? Do we use this third party company? And no, the answer is no. Our, we, our managing partners, our team, we all interact as ourselves. And um, there, it really takes it to the next level as it's authentic. Um, I know for one, I can, I can pick out the um, hired or fake accounts on LinkedIn who are just commenting like bots. Um, so being authentic in today's world is super important. Um, be yourself. Don't afraid. Don't be afraid to just be authentic to who you are, because that goes a long way, especially in this world full of AI and robots and crazy things like that. Um, that there's a time and a place for AI and robots, but it doesn't take out that um, authentic uh, you and who you are. Um, another thing um, to to keep in mind is consistency. So you want to make sure that you're once you start um, an authority platform, you stick with it. So it's really important that you don't. So we've been doing this webinar series, for example, um, since uh, 20, even before I started with the company, which was in 2018, or I started in 2019. So it started in tw um, end of 2018, this webinar series. And we have done weekly webinars every single week since. So there has been times where we're, um, we may, it might fall on Christmas or on a, on a certain holiday. So we do, we move it, but we have for the most part done a webinar every single week since 2018. Um, they look different now and it's okay to evolve and change and, and stay with the time. Um, but consistency is so important because um, if you really want to be a leader in the space, you want to always be top of mind. Um, and the only way to be top of mind is to stay consistent and to stay relevant. I didn't mention this at the beginning, but if you have any questions while I'm talking, feel free to drop them in the Q&A or the chat box. Um, I, I'll answer those at the end. Um, so what else? So how to get started and how, how to properly maintain it. So First things first, before you ever um, go and start an authority platform, you want to make sure that you have um, a place to capture leads. So it's I don't want to miss this step and I want to make sure I mention this. Um, a, this You should be doing this anyways if you're in the syndication space and you're trying to raise money or raise capital. You should have a place like a CRM or a place to capture leads. So make sure you have that set up first. Um, you, I guess you could use Excel in the beginning, but once you get past 50 names, you're going to get, it's, it's going to be too much to manage manually. I would say get a good CRM, um, start some email campaigns to these the, your contacts, make sure that you're staying, like I said, top of mind. Um, so I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Um, so how to, get, how to get started and how to properly maintain. Um, one thing that's really important is picking your, your niche. So obviously apartment syndication, that's what we're talking about. But what makes you trustworthy in the space? What makes you successful in the space? What is your specific angle? Are you a doctor? Is that your angle? Are you trying to reach other doctors? Um, are you... Do you inter are you someone who really enjoys doing interviews? Are you more of like a host? Like a um, there's a couple of people who in this space who are very they when you ask them to speak at the events at, at different events which we've hosted before they go I don't want to speak but I would love to host a panel or I'd love to you know be a host in some way. So is that your model? Are you more of a um, are you a host? Are you a guest? Like what what do you want people to view you as as in in this space? Um, and then you want to um, create high high quality contacts. High, I'm sorry, high quality content. Um, make sure that um, you you do your research, know what you're what you're um, putting together, and making sure it's high quality. Um, make sure you have a brand. So branding is super important. I've done some webinars on branding in the past. If you want to look at our um, multifamily investor nation YouTube channel. Um, make sure you have a brand in place. So um, it's really important that when someone like looks for you, they they know they're looking at you and your brand. 
your brand's super important long-term to make sure that you're memorable and people um, can find you. So one thing I, I, one thing I've always taught people is, especially in the space, there's a personal brand and then there's your business brand. I don't know if that's, so for example, Dan Hanford is our managing partner. So Dan Hanford himself has a brand. He is, he's got different things that he's working on personally, as well as professionally. And then also we have PassiveInvesting.com. So that's also Dan's brand, but that's Dan's business brand. So you want to make sure that you establish both. Some people forget to establish their personal brand in this space. And those are the people that don't make it because they don't, re people don't remember, you know, PassiveInvesting.com necessarily, but they might remember Dan Hanford or they might know you by they may know us by Dan Hanford, but don't realize it's PassiveInvesting.com. So you want to make sure both go hand in hand um, and they don't have to be the same either. You could have um, a podcast for your brand, but then be really active as yourself on LinkedIn. So, you know, me, Melissa Broom could be really active on LinkedIn, posting, talk, you know, interacting with others, but then there's the brand side of it that may run a podcast. So make sure you have both. Um, it's sort of like not util if you don't use both, you're sort of wasting potential, I think, because people don't realize your personal brand is so important. Um, I know we're not, you're, you're not, you don't have to necessarily try to be an influencer. That's not what I'm saying. You don't, don't have to like create content, like about, you know, your personal life, but, um, making sure that you're representing yourself and people, people know who you are. That's, it goes a long way with trust. Um, so that's super important. Um, networking and collaborate. So um, making sure, like I mentioned, that you're networking, going to events, using, um, leveraging that personal brand to um, create, you know, um, create your authority platform. Um, and in addition, you want to, um, yes. Stay committed. Yeah. So like I said earlier, stay consistent, stay committed, don't give up. Um, start with one thing, start with one thing that you're good at. So what do you enjoy? Are you, do you enjoy what talking? Do you enjoy writing? Do you enjoy, um, you know, social media? So what, what is something that is start with the, with the thing that you enjoy most and run with that. Um, if you're not much of a, if you don't love being on camera, I wouldn't start with a webinar series. I would start with writing a book or, you know, starting a, starting a blog. Um, one thing that's, um, Dan Hanford's always said, and that I've also, um, taken in, uh, into my career is version one is better than version none. I don't know if I'm, I'm, many people have said that I'm not trying to coin the term, but version one is better than version none. And it's true. So, you know, your first podcast might not be great. That's okay. You know that, but you, at least you did it and you got yourself out there. Um, you'll never know unless you try. So, um, it's a very simple concept, but you know, version one is better than version none. We, we send out a monthly newsletter. It's a um, great example of this. So when I first started in 2019 with our company, I, um, Dan handed me the newsletter that he had outsourced. And he said, the first thing he said, he was like, version one is better than version none. Please make this better. So I turned around, I have a, I have a design background, a graphic design background. So I, I redid it. Um, and now I think we're in like version two or three of the design of it. But, um, you know, his, his goal was to get a newsletter out and he did, you know, he did that first month and, um, and then I was able to take what he had built and, and build on that. So always don't be afraid to start, um, the, the worst thing you can do is start and then stop, just start and get better, continue, continue improvement and making, making sure that you, um, don't give up. Um, a lot of this stuff takes a lot of work, um, utilize VAs. Um, like I said, I, I wouldn't use, utilize a VA for, to be your voice, but you can utilize a VA or third party for podcasting management, webinar management, um, ghostwriting, um, all kinds of different, there's all kinds of different things, um, creating websites, social media, graphics, whatever you need. Um, I like Upwork to find VAs, but there's lots of great, great, um, uh, sites out there to find them. Um, like I mentioned, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop those in the chat box. Cause, um, we are almost wrap getting ready to wrap up here. Um, so in addition, uh, make sure that you are 
there's some opera there is opportunity to monetize uh, an authority platform um that's not our goal but that is an option so um in the way the way i see it and the way we see it as a company um the, we we like giving out free education that's what we do we don't make our money on our education we make money in apartment syndication and real estate syndication so um that's our model um it's worked well for us we don't we we've charged we do charge for events but that's only to put the event on so all of our marketing and events or all of the event um income goes right back into marketing for the event to make it even better so um we don't do our events for profit we do them to pay for themselves basically um so that's that's one thing but there's always opportunity to monetize um, if that's what, if that's what you want to do, coaching programs, different things like that, that, um, that is another, um, avenue for an authority platform. All right. Does anybody have any questions, um, that maybe I missed something or anything we want to dive in? This is authority platforms is a very big topic. I could go on for a very long time into each one podcasting, writing a book, starting webinar series, but, um, we would be here all day. So if there's one in particular that anybody that's listening wants me to cover or discuss, I'm happy to dive further into how to do any of these things or anything specific. Um, I'll give everyone just a minute to, um, to ask some questions in the chat. Joe asked, um, who do we use for podcasting? So, um, we use a service called Poditize to publish our podcasts. So we're currently managing three active podcasts, um, and we are dropping episodes once a week on each podcast. So that's like three episodes a week. Um, so we use Poditize They're They've been very helpful. Um, there's probably others out there. I, that, that's just the one we've always used. And that's poditize.com. Um, let's see, any other questions in here? Let's see, let me look here? What does the future look like for social media marketing? Um, so social media is interesting because it's ever changing. There could be some, there could be a new platform that is we don't know about yet, which is it's ever changing. Um, right now, TikTok and Reels are the the way to go. Our video does really well. Um, video in the form of TikTok and Reels. So um, making sure that the video is this way. So it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's nine by 16. So 16 by nine is this. And then nine by six is my kids. Nine by 16 is, um, is that. So Creating reels and TikToks um, does really well. I, I will say that you have to be comfortable being on camera because that's a big commitment to to um, committing to a TikTok account or uh, Instagram reels. Um, but there's a lot of times you can use your if you're if you're on a podcast, you can use you know podcasting. You can use that for blog posts. You can use that for um, social media. So. I'm going off on rabbit, down a rabbit hole here, but what does the future for social media marketing look like? Um, I don't think, I think where we're at right now, I don't think it's anything's going to, to change drastically. It'll, it'll, there'll be another new platform like TikTok that, cause TikTok hit, hit the scene during COVID, I think, and it blew up. So oh, I'm sure over the next 10 years, there'll be something else. The new biggest thing, the best thing to do is just to stay stay active. I like, honestly, personally, I don't use a lot of social, social media. I'm really on it to just sort of watch what's happening. Um, I think the best thing you can do is even if you're not a fan of it for your own personal use, just staying on it. You know, if you're committed to it, take five, 10 minutes a day, scroll, click around, see what's, see what has a good impression, see what's, you know, got nothing. Um, the good thing about social media too is it's a fairly low um low cost, low time commitment to to do. So try it. Try see what works and 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 go from there. Is there a point when the is is there a point when there's too much marketing? Where do you draw the line between being relevant versus annoying? This is a good question. Um so yes, I think you can be annoying. Um but you have to think that 
it, you're not so you want to be across multiple platforms. So for example, if you're posting on LinkedIn every hour, every hour, every hour, it, it becomes LinkedIn, the algorithm isn't going to like that. Okay. Um, but you could take that same energy and do one post a day on LinkedIn, one post a day on Instagram, one post a day on bigger pockets, one post a day on Facebook, right? So there's all these different platforms that you want to stay active on. Um, I do think that, you know, releasing a webinar or hosting a webinar every day is not, is not, no, your audience isn't going to respond to that. We found that like weekly webinars and weekly podcasting does really well. Um, it's consistent. Um, but yeah, you don't want to, um, you definitely don't want to oversaturate yourself, but you want to stay relevant. You want to comment with comment and post with purpose, email with purpose. Um, when we have, for example, when we have deals that we're, we're raising money for, um, we don't email about the deal every day. Um, I, I, cause that's the fastest and quickest way to get unsubscribed and we don't want our investors unsubscribing. Um, so when you email, you want to email with purpose, like, Hey, you know, here's an update on the, on the raise or, Hey, here's, you know, whatever, whatever the, the messaging is, make sure you have a message. Um, some people tend to forget that like time is valuable. If you really want somebody to read your email, give them something to read. Don't just tell them the same thing they already read um, or that they may already know or, or whatnot. So that's my, that's my advice for overdoing it. Um, but definitely don't underdo it either. There's a, fi there's a fine balance and you'll learn what, as you're doing these things, what works and doesn't work because it's um, you want to stay, stay relevant um, but your audience will, you'll, you'll know, um, based off of numbers and interactions. So, um, does anybody else have any other questions here? I can, I've got about five more minutes left. I'm happy to answer anything related to, um, marketing authority platforms, social media, um, anything related to our group. Give everyone just another minute here. Um, so you would recommend, so you would recommend to have our own website and collect emails for email marketing. Yes. Yeah, so as I mentioned, having a brand. So first you want to establish that brand, pick a name, um, pick, get a logo created, get a domain. Um, yes, you want to have a website. There's a lot of great resources for websites that are easy entry. So there's like Wix, W-I-X, um, Squarespace. Um, there's ClickFunnels, um, which is more of a funnel, but it's definitely, you can utilize it for like landing pages. You want an online presence because it, um, it, if someone's going to, if your, if your end goal is to raise capital for a multifamily deal, let's say you're raising a million dollars. If someone's going to wire you $50,000, they're going to have to, they're going to do their research on you and look you up and see who you are and see what your brand is. So it's really important to have a brand. Um, it goes a long way. Um, you know, imagine like going online to buy something. Let's say I'm, I'm looking for, I need to go online and buy a certain kind of lotion. Um, and I get on this website and there's, there's no brand. It's just a link with lotion and to buy. I, I wouldn't trust it. I would think it's a scam. So you want to make sure that you don't, you don't look like a scam. You don't, you know, you want, you have to have that sort of, um, digital presence to back you. And that it, I it, don't get intimidated by the, the sound of a website. Like I said, use Upwork. Um, there's some fairly affordable options out there. Um, if you're more of a DIYer, like I said, Wix or Squarespace or ClickFunnels, um, a lot of the CRMs have like a landing page component to them that you can utilize. Easy to learn. A lot of them are easy to learn. Um, and yeah, you want to collect emails. So like I said, the CRM, you want to collect emails for email marketing. Um, I wouldn't over email your list, but you know, e like I said, email them when it's relevant and there's something to say. Um, it could be, and it, it could be anything. It depends on where you're at in, in the, in this whole process, but, um, how much success, uh, yeah. So how much success 
have you seen in the digital mark how how much basically she's asking do i think raising capital works better face to face or digitally so uh the answer is both um face to face is great i think what covid taught us is we have to be able to um run our normal businesses virtually um so yeah, face-to-face -face is awesome. If you can go to networking events and you can um, be at all the conferences and that that's awesome, you know, that goes a long way. Um, but definitely utilize platforms like Zoom and um, Teams, you know, Teams and things to, to have um, virtual meetings. Um, the biggest thing for like raising capital is relationships. So if, when you're first starting out, those relationships are super important. If you've got if you're if you've got 20 investors and they're and you know c communicating with them goes such a long way even if it's just a quick text or an email or something you want to make sure that you're communicating with them um with purpose but um staying relevant staying top of mind um we've had just with our group we've had tremendous success virtually um you know we've grown our company to you know 2 billion um 2 billion asset um, 2 billion in acquisitions in just five years or so. Um, and, you know, a big chunk of that was during COVID where everything was virtual. You know, there was events here and there and things that tried to try to, you know, to stay consistent. But I mean, I, I think there's a lot to, to do digitally um, and virtually. So that answers your question. Does anybody else have anything I can touch on before we wrap up for today? Uh, all right so all right so let me refresh this page and see who we've got uh how we keep in touch so if you want to um reach me um you can email either melissa at passiveinvesting.com or events at passiveinvesting.com either e either email comes to me and my team um, let me see what we've got next week. All right. So next week we have um, Whitney. So my counterpart over in our investor education department. Um, but Whitney will be talking about maximizing engagement and retention using a learning model to teach passive investors about multifamily investing. Um, so it's a great like second part to this is um, Whitney um, is education. So Whitney does all of our educating for investors. She's an investor herself and she's so knowledgeable um, so, you know, we, she's constantly sharing her, um, her knowledge with our investors. So, um, definitely don't want to miss this one. If you, if you came today, I think you'll be interested in, in this webinar as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. Wanted to just mention really quick, if you missed it at the beginning, um, head over to Amazon and grab your copy of Dan Hanford and Danny Rendezzo's book. Um, Dan does a great job talking about this topic specifically in the book. Um, so if you haven't already, go ahead, go grab your, the link is in the chat box again. Um, if you haven't already, go get your copy, leave us a review, leave a review on this, on Amazon for us as well to, uh, and tell your friends, grab an extra copy for your friends. So I have mine here. Um, Great. So, um, like I said, go ahead, sign up for next week and Whitney will be, Whitney will be presenting with you. Um, and I hope everyone has a great happy Halloween, get lots of candy trick or treating tonight. I'm going to show my earrings one more time. Always like being festive and have a great rest of your week.